Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us on the BC Harvest 2020. I'm Anthony Gizmondi for Gizmondi Online, and today we're on Vancouver Island in the Cowichan Valley at Blue Grouse Vineyards. Joining us to follow the grapes is winery owner Paul Brunner. Paul, how are you this morning? I am super here in the Kilts Vineyard in beautiful Cowichan Valley on a kind of beautiful, sunny, foggy morning. So what are you going to be uh, working with today? Today we're going to do Pinot Gris. So we've got about, let me see here, we've got not quite three quarters of a hectare of Pinot Gris and uh, we hope to get three to four tons off, be starting fairly quickly. Yeah, maybe we could have a look at those Pinot Gris. Well, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about the crop. How big is it? We've been hearing about smaller grapes, but great grapes in the Okanagan. What's happening on Vancouver Island? Well, I'm kind of blunt, so it's been a rather rough year. We had we had March uary, we had April uary, we <laughs> had June uary, we had July uary. So it's been really, really a tough month. There's uh, the first bin picked, and if you look down here a little ways, you can see a few pickers. I don't know if you can pick that up. Yeah, and a little bit still hanging on the vine there. So uh, nice color nice looking nice looking grapes this year but uh, probably the bricks are a little bit lower than we would like bailey can talk to that in a minute yeah well we notice the color in your pinot gris and sometimes we see uh, that color in some pinot gris is is the blue grouse pinot gris have a bit of color in it normally or not uh the tip typically not but uh you know, that's entirely up to Bailey and his winemaking, so maybe he can address that in sure. a bit. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you a couple questions about uh, the growing season. Uh, we were up in Lillooet. We've been down in the South Okanagan. How would you describe the growing season on, uh, on your property on Vancouver Island? Does it start early, late? Like, how different is it than, than anywhere else in BC? Well, we get bud break pretty much pretty consistently right at the end of April, 27th, 28th of April. Yeah. Um, March can be pretty good in, in terms of getting some growth going. But if we have a cool January, then the flowering, uh, the flowering isn't as efficient as we'd like. And this year we had a bit of a setback there, a little bit of rain. We had some, we had some rain on and off throughout the summer, which hasn't been very calm. And I guess it was good for the Good for the, the river, but not good for us in the wine business. So it's been a mm -hmm. tough year in terms of heat. We're in, if you look at the last 12 years, we'll be in the bottom four or five years of that. So yeah, it's, it's, it's been a tough year. But a lot of people wish they had a cool climate like you too. So there are some plus sides to it. Yeah, well, we are, you know, we didn't have any forest fires, any meaningful forest fires on the island or anything, but uh, we did get the smoke up from our friends in the United States but the island itself has been pretty good and yeah. the weather the weather's been you know kind of off and on but uh, mostly cool. We can't really cover all the exciting projects that are happening at Blue Grouse but one of the things you did do was get involved with soil scientist Pedro Para to plant some new vines. Can you tell us just a little bit about your soil? You've come out of the mining business. You seem very keen to have explored what's going on on the island. How would you explain where you are in the, that soil? Did you, would you come out of the ocean? Like, what is it? Well, step back a minute. Vancouver Island itself is just a big plug of volcanics. It's basically basalt. And of course, these things have, have a long history. It's got a lot of uh, limestone in it from the being above water and underwater over its uh, three or 400 million years. Locally yeah. here, we've been above water, underwater, I suppose, uh, many times in, in the last 100, 100 million years or so. And so anything under 100 meters has had significant marine influence, and, and we are under 100 meters above sea level. So that would certainly apply to us. Uh, and I think the other thing that's kind of interesting here is we, um, we are sitting basically under or on top of, I guess, a... Uh, fallucial glacial deposit. So basically when a glacier melts, it forms a river underneath and it looks like just any river. It's full of rocks and boulders and sands and that covers a big chunk of this vineyard. So we get the, we've got lean soils um, and, and makes for an interesting opportunity. We'll know in another, I don't know, 15 years, 10 years, uh, exactly yeah. how that's, that's gonna pay off. 
And you've headed a bit. You're going to focus on Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, and you're also now planted the, the key varieties for sparkling wine. Like I know that you've made a lot of traditional sparkling wine, but now you're going to use the traditional varieties. Yeah, we've Bailey's done traditional method sparkling since basically since he came here, uh, using non-traditional grapes. So we've yeah. planted we've planted Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and Pinot Meunier to make traditional method with traditional grapes, and we're going to get a little bit of fruit. That's the first vineyard we did with uh, with Pedro Para. Yeah, and we're going to get a little bit of fruit off it this year. Not enough to to really make a wine with, but to at least to experiment with and kind of see what what we might get out of it. So mm. that'll probably be yeah. the last thing we pick. Yeah, can we talk to Bailey for a minute about this Pinot Gris? Yeah, sure. Hang on. Turn around, did you? Nope. Bailey. Anthony, nice to see you. Great to see you. You know, in these harvest videos, we try to take people inside to what's going on. Can you tell us what you'll do with this Pinot Gris from start to finish, how it will end up into the bottle? Well, you know, uh, as, as much as Paul said that it was a lean year, there's no question that it was. Um, that being said, I'm really happy with the flavor profile of the grapes. I think it's going to speak to the island and the uh, and the fact that we get uh, we get some really bright acidity, so that will uh, that will be consistent with uh, with what's been going on here. Well, yeah, can you show us some grapes while you're talking? Absolutely. Grab a bunch so, there. Give us a look at them. Wow, they look beautiful. So yeah, you, you were asking also about the. Um, about what happens when, uh, you know, with the color of the gris. I mean, it is yeah. sort of almost a, a red grape, but, um, you know, there's other people that keep uh, a little more skin contact. I'm not particularly looking for that. I yeah. might try something of that in the future, but um, for me, I, I just like the clear. I also find that it's, the, the color that you get from, uh, from the skin extraction is very transient, especially in Pinot Gris, which doesn't have a whole lot of color. So it's, it's rather difficult to maintain that. And I don't know if I'd want to, you know, come out with something like that and then not be able to replicate it. Mm -hmm. So you got, you got to watch what you're doing. What we'll do with these though, is we'll take them in and we'll, we'll put them in the press whole cluster, maintain yep. the integrity of the fruit profile, you know, put it in the tank and then, uh, and let it settle a bit, rack it off with the really heavy leaves. It's, you know, all the wasps and uh, and gravel that end up in it and then uh and then we'll start the ferment and transfer it to uh to some nice uh barrels um probably about 25 percent will end up in barrel that's unusual to, to have people put pinot gris in barrels it was one of those things when i first started here you know we didn't have a oak white um, which most pro, you know, most portfolios have in their uh, in, in, at their disposal, and with yeah. no Chardonnay, the, this was the next um, the next logical uh, logical candidate. So I thought uh, I thought that it would do well and develop a bit more. We also do the quill, which is 100% stainless steel. So I wanted to do something that was a bit different, and uh, and I really like uh, the fact that you know about 25% oak influence nothing heavy but just gives yeah. a bit more of a mouth feel can you grab some grapes we want to see them in your hand yeah so yeah you can see i mean really great quality this year yeah even and better tastes good <laughs> i love it so yeah. yeah and those will end up in the press by the end of the evening and so how, what's next? What will be the picking regime for the next couple of weeks? What, what's left to pick and how will it go? Um, mostly just Pinot Noir and the stuff that's down uh, in the Paula Vineyard, like Paul said, it, um, it'll be our first harvest. It's a bit spotty, so we won't, uh, it won't be as big a crop, but I'm really excited to work with a bit of the Chardonnay and the Meunier and a few of the um, Dijon clones. Yeah. See what we can coax out of it. Um, we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'll try and press them all separately, but if there's just not enough volume, we'll, uh, the extingencies will be that they go into the press together and end up as the cuvee for some sparkling. 
Right. I have one last quick question. I know that you're picking today. There's some talk about rain. How does rain affect the harvest? The grapes, as they as they get closer to full ripeness, the rain, the osmotic pressure on the grape itself can make the skin pop. And once uh -huh. the skin pops and the juice comes out, then it's just a, a food source for all sorts of molds and mildews and botrytis. Um, you know, people talk about the noble rot. Well, it's not very noble in a wet climate. It's just rot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, in, in, in other places where it's a little drier, you would get a bit of that and it would shrivel the grapes, but it doesn't translate like that here. We had, at the end of September, we had seven centimeters of rain in three days. I mean, it was huge. Yeah. That was really tough. Um, but that's what we face here on the island is when the rains, I mean, we're in the rainforest. Let's remember that. This isn't the desert. This is the yep. rainforest. And so when the rains come often at the end of the year, they don't stop. So we've been quite lucky. We've had some really good breaks in the, um, in the weather. So from here on, though, it's going to be a matter of just trying to get the grapes in when they're nice and dry and it's not too inclement so that we get a lot of dilution from residual water hanging around yeah. so i think from here pinot noir next and and the uh, black muscat off our property and then the the sparkling varieties from the new vineyard down below thanks bailey can we see paul before we go you certainly can wow he's paul. talked forever didn't he anthony yeah that, that's <laughs> a good thing for you <laughs> thanks Hey Paul, thanks so much for your time. Are you are you pretty jacked at this time of the year? It's a, it's an exciting time for for people growing grapes. Yeah, it's the best time of year, and you know you every every year you start out hoping for the best, and uh, we've had a few setbacks this year, mostly due to temperature, some rain stuff early in the year, but the crops looking pretty good as you saw. The Pinot Noir is very clean, or or sorry, the Pinot Gris is very clean, and we're pretty yeah, we're pretty pretty happy. You look like a farmer, man. You look fantastic. Thanks so much for your time, Paul. I know how busy you are, and uh, we'll catch up with you soon to, to taste the product from 2020. Well, we'll look forward to that. Okay. Thank you, man. Hey, thanks all of you for watching our episode uh, three of Follow the Grapes today on Vancouver Island. Check our website, gizmoniaonwine.com, as we add new episodes over the next few weeks uh, to finish up our series. Uh, and it looks like it's going to be a rush to the finish. Uh, for all these people picking grapes. Follow us on social for immediate updates or subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll see you next time.